Good morning, esteemed panel of judges, respected academicians, and my dear friends. Today I stand before you to present my paper that is relating to the legal education in the Sark nations. Firstly, what I would like to suggest is that we need to amend the definition of legal education that we are adhering to. My suggestion is that legal education needs to extend to the society as well. We are focusing on the legal education that is only on the basis of the law students. But in reality, it is very important for us to consider that legal education is very important for the society as well. And unless and until the society is legally aware of the legal remedies that the law of the lands contain, we cannot, we cannot begin to reform the legal education that is present. Furthermore, I would like to suggest that the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation in Law, which has majorly been left defunct, needs to be reformed into a regulatory body so that a greater unification of the SARC region is done through this. SARC, the SARC law was established for harmonizing the laws of the SARC region and the countries which are present in the SARC region. But it has now been left dilapidated, dilapidated. And hence, it is my suggestion that the SARC law be brought up again and be reformed in order to in order to lead to a greater unification. This can be a cornerstone towards a greater unification of the SARC region. Hence, legal education has a big and a huge role to play in transforming all spheres of political and social significance in the SARC region. Furthermore, I would also like to suggest that clinical education is very important as well. Clinical education lacks in areas that are related to funding, and hence the government needs to supply the funds. And the administrative offices that are being held by the bureaucrats are stifling the, the legal education through this clinical approach. Hence, my suggestion is also related to reforming the, legal, uh, the clinical education that is being rendered through the law schools. Clinical education needs to be reformed in a manner that the research-oriented work that is being conducted by the law students be turned into an academic work as well. It should not be left to an extracurricular approach. What I would like to suggest is that clinical education should be reformed in a manner that the law students who are, who are in their higher levels of study, that is, they are, they are in their fourth or fifth years, can go to the field and do the research work and this be evaluated by professors and academicians and their faults in them and the flaws in their research work be pointed out. This can lead to a this can lead to a formation of a research skill and a research oriented approach towards legal education. Furthermore, another major problem with the legal education of the SARC region is the coexistence of two kinds of programs. We cannot leave our trust on two programs, that is, that is the three-year model and the five-year model. According to me, the three-year course has run its course. We cannot, we cannot keep on going with it. We need to, the pedagogical insufficiencies are majorly concentrated on the foundation that is provided by the, by the two courses, by the coexistence of these two courses. The teachers cannot, in reality, try to teach both, these, both the students who belong to these courses. They need to understand that the, there are subtle differences in the needs of the three-year course law students and the five-year course law students. Hence, my, my position is that the, the three-year course needs to be abandoned. And the five-year course and our energy should be focused on introducing this five-year course and revitalizing it and rejuvenating it to the extent that the research-oriented skills be implemented and incorporated in this five-year course. It is clearly lacking in this respect, according to me. Furthermore, my, my point about uh, the introduction of internationalism and cosmopolitanism 
in legal education needs to be considered. What we are seeing as, as a first year, I am seeing that the legal education in our country is more focused towards domestic laws and we are not trying to focus on the international needs. We have to realize that in the future, the cosmopolitanism will help us because in the future all the structures of legal education will be based on the international appearances and the international law. Hence, international law needs to be given its significance. And global law schools can be, a, can be an initiative which needs to be launched in the South region. In India, there, there appears to be islands of excellence, but that it, it lacks in the, in the respect that there are not many good colleges of, uh, that are offering legal education. Hence, my basic submission is that societal interactions have a role to play in legal education. To, to attempt that reforming legal education isolated from the common masses would depict the black enveloping us, enveloping us snuffed out, snuffed out candy. Hence, we cannot attempt to reform legal education without involving the common masses. Legal education needs to be incorporated in a manner that, the, that it is extended to the, to the society as well. Legal education needs to ensure social justice. And social justice cannot be, cannot be ensured if we deprive the majority of the society of their basic natural right to know about their legal remedies and the laws of their lands. It needs to be extended to every section of the society. And it is only through this that reforms in legal education can be implemented. And in this manner, we can re rejuvenate and revitalize the legal education in the South region. Thank you. Thank you for the particular initiative that if the South region has established that university in Delhi. But what we need to realize is that the South region needs to implement these, uh, these kinds of initiatives in other countries as well. In India it has been done to a certain extent. There, there appears to be a problem in implementing these initiatives in other countries in the South region as well. And this initiative needs to, be, needs to go on further. Sir, I have a question. Yes. I'm just wasting time focusing on other modules or other subjects rather than you should focus from day one on legal subjects. That's what you want to do, therefore you should be studying legal subjects. Um, isn't that a very narrow view? Because you want, on, on the one point you say we should be internationalized, and the other point you're saying we should not study any other subjects except law. Um, the studying other subjects, humanity subjects, sociological subjects, gives you broader perspective. You know, um, if you look at uh, for, um, the multinational law firms, they prefer students who have done non-law degree and then do a conversion course into law, one year conversion course. So they study law in one year. So and they prefer those students because they have much broader perspective when they you know, when they come to law. So they can you know they're not sort of narrow-minded. So I think five-year degree, like you know, you are promoting the five-year degree, but you're saying we should take away all the other subjects. So what do you think? Um, you know, like sort of studying other subjects, you know, sort of is better for the students. That's a very good question, ma'am. What I have intended in my written submissions is that uh, in the first year, I'm not saying that all the subjects of law should be introduced, but since we are, we come with certain expectations of legal studies, we should not, we should at least get a, a broad perspective of what law is about in the first year. What in India, in India, what happens is that in the first year only the social sciences subjects are introduced. And that is what I am against. I am, I am standing for the introduction of certain perspectives of law. Certain perspectives means a broad perspective and not in reality that you should introduce uh, intellectual proper properties law in the first year. I am not up for that. I am saying that a broad perspective of law should be introduced in the first year. That is my point. And ma'am, about the social sciences, I have been a witness to uh, one lawyer who was complaining and he said that in the field of psychology it is very important that uh, the lawyers are aware of what psychology is about. Because the judges who are judging their cases 
are, are, giving, are giving decisions based on certain levels of their own bias, biasness. They have their own uh, methods of uh, understanding a certain, certain case and hence psychology should as well be introduced in the legal, uh, in the legal studies. Perspectives in law. Right. That is jurisprudence? Uh, sir, actually, what I am. jurisprudence in the first year. No, sir. What I am talking about, uh, perspectives mean how, how should you conduct your research, how should you uh, behave as a lawyer, what, what exactly. Okay. Yes. So you say how do you conduct your research and how do you initiate a person who has come out of the school, right? Into what exactly is research is about? Is there a difference between legal research, scientific research, social sciences research, any other research? So research itself is, is a big issue, right? So unless you know what a law student is supposed to do with what he is studying, research will be of no use. I suppose therefore some thinking as deep thinking has gone into why bringing the study of strictly speaking non-legal subject. I suppose they introduce the student to the wide range of connections between what happens in society, politics, social sciences, philosophy, psychology, ethics, right? The wide range of connections are brought about as a kind of basic understanding. You are probably introduced to them. With that introduction, you get into what is the interpretation. Somebody, I remember some famous cynical statement that uh, interpretation of law is for friends and law is applied to enemies. Right? How do you understand the distinction? So, so then you just go on in, into the end of the first and second year, you begin to know what is the interpreting law, what is reading law. So that all that will slowly come in when you have what you call the perspective about law. Isn't it? So I do not know that we can completely abandon a little, you know, entry into other disciplines. Whether it can be completely abandoned, I am not sure. Second, we talked about abandoning the three-year course. Professor Manon flagged that issue a little earlier, right? Academic and non-academic practice oriented. The three-year course probably serves a different purpose altogether. It can be a purely academic oriented initiative to ensure that people who still want to have legal education from an academic point of view or from serving other national interests can pursue a three-year course because they have come after studying political science, psychology, commerce, English literature, but take any subjects in arts and science. Students of science walk in, right? Physics, chemistry, biology. Students who do IIT, they walk into a three-year course. So they do not refer a five-year course. So there could be a, I do not know that we can say yes or no, a binary approach to the whole issue. Thank you for your question, sir. The first, the first point you raised was about the introduction of law subjects in the first year. Sir, what I would like to say here is that the, when a fresher is introduced to the uh, study of legal education, they are like they are disappointed when they are not uh, they are not greeted by certain you know uh, certain introduction to what law is all about. So my view is that at least we can create a, a subject or we can implement certain ways so that there is a broad broad introduction of what law is about for the law students. There is a broad introduction. I am not talking about specific subjects, but what I am advocating for is a certain certain, a certain idea of what law is about. And as for your second question, sir, I am willing to concede that a binary approach in this matter cannot be, is, cannot, cannot be right. It, it is not correct, obviously, but if there can be a distinction made between an academic and non-academic course, then it is all right. But until and unless that is done, I do not see the three-year course creating lawyers who are very, who are very uh, competent in their approach because they clearly lack the social sciences background, which is necessary for a lawyer to, to comprehend the societal interactions that are uh, that is very necessary in the legal field. Both Professor Mann and myself are three years old. Yes, sir. Sir, I was, uh, sir, I would not, uh, I, I was not uh, trying to, uh, 
say it that, sir. But, but what my point is, sir, that in, in today's environment, sir, it becomes really very difficult for a student to gain the uh, perspectives of social interaction and the social sciences in the three year course because of the inadequacies of time, sir. That would make the entire English course uh, incompetent. Because no, their degrees are only three years. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to say that. But what my intention is, that in the in the case of India, yeah, I I the, that is enough. Give it. Yes. There are two ways to spread the light. Better with a candle that lights, or with a mirror that reflects light. We here have the candle from Sena Madam Sir, Madam Madam Sir, and all the dignitaries on and off the dais, and my dear friends. Warm good afternoon. Today I am here to speak about the topic Legal Education in South Countries, Opportunities and Challenges. Legal Education and Development become interrelated concepts in modern developing societies which are struggling to develop in social welfare states. Before talking about, before coming into my topic, I would like to speak about what is SARC. Eight South Asian countries, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Maldives, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka constitute the Confederation of SARC, that is South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation and it was formed in 1985 with seven members and later Afghanistan joined in 2007. Legal education in South Asia refers to twin problems of transcendence and ingress. There is a great scandalous of data with reference to legal education in the SARC member countries. It is generally well recognized that law schools provide the human capital that feeds into the courts, bars, the prosecutional bodies, ministries and other agencies that administer them. Our law schools have been sustained after many alienated model law schools in foreign countries. We continue to think as an aftermath of far-fetched far thinking as we suffer from the continental debate. Legal problem has already become the citadel of status quo along with the authorities of these institutions will be the society. A stereotype mis misapprehension is found amidst to those students that legal studies and professional training following the academic phase are of two different areas. This denied out certain deficiencies which law students experience due to improper execution of erroneous academic programs. Whatever the student of law achieves in these phases is in fact a mirror image at law school and actual influence of law. For a comparative analysis that is in country wise, Afghanistan, according to the Ministry of Higher Education in 2011, there are 23 public universities. There are uh, public universities which uh, consist of four departments, including Department of Public Law, Department of Criminal Law, Private Law, and International Relations. Then uh, there are Sharia law schools uh, which teach uh, Department of uh, Jurisprudence, Principles of Jurisprudence, Department of Islamic Education, and Department of Faith and Philosophy, and uh, Department of Islamic Culture. So, uh, Afghanistan have dual, uh, uh, dual institutions, uh, mainly public universities and Sharia law schools. Bangladesh seems to resemble like that of India, that there are marked qualitative differences. In Bangladesh, there are two strains of legal education. First, private law colleges based on two year postgraduate courses and four year undergraduate LLB courses. Uh, uh, but these two, uh, there is a wide difference between the two. Uh, in case of Bhutan, Bhutan National Legal Institution Institute was established under the Judicial Service Act of 2007. Uh, it is a centre devoted to providing continuing judicial and legal education through training, professional development, research, publication and dissemination program to foster desirable trades. And uh, the Royal Institute of Law is the next project that is to be initiated in Bhutan by 2017. Its primary objective is to produce the finest judges and legal professionals in the region. Uh, India, um, most of the students who perform well in their intermediate education with select medicine, engineering, computer business, ma computer business management and accounting. For, um, a law as a profession and legal education as a discipline was not an interesting choice of students in India prior to the arrival of five-year law, five -year law courses. And it was uh, uh, Honourable Mr. N.R. Uh, Madhavidin sir, who, uh, who was successful in accomplishing uh, the mission of uh, providing national schools and 
uh, the five year low courses. Uh, the vision was completed successfully with the dynamic and the Marble Maiden Third uh, and in Maldives late 90, uh, 1999, Maldives is no post secondary education institute offering legal training or education. In response to a request from the government of the uh, Republic of Maldives, the fact finding mission was fielded to the Maldives in September 1999 to gather data for technical assistance to strengthen legal education and judicial training. Uh, there also they have faculty of Sharia law, Sharia and law schools, uh, that is dual institutionaries. Then Pakistan, university is a major contributory of education, educating professional lawyers. Most of the institutions in Pakistan are not performing up to mark, but Pakistan Bar Council is an important contributor to the mission of improving legal education there. And in Nepal also they have contemporary legal education in Nepal caters theoretical knowledge of law and encompassing positivism, history school, sociological school, economic and socialist school. When we come to Sri Lanka, there are three major institution, institutions in Sri Lanka teaching of law, that is the Faculty of Law in the University of Colombo, Department of Law in the Auckland University, uh, and the Law College, Sri Lanka Law College. Uh, there are, though there are many opportunities in South region for legal education, legal education but uh, that more than that there are challenges that is uh, faced with students or institutions. The significant shift in the legal economy presents the real challenges in legal education. Globalization has caused multiple challenges to the future of legal education. So a lawyer has to be prepared to play this multifaceted mm, role. Obviously, It is the institution of legal education which has to equip lawyers with requisite knowledge, insights and skills. But our institutions of higher learning in law have failed to harness the vitality and idealism of the youth for betterment of the society. It is essential to re-examine our teaching methods in the light of our objectives. While teachers may be in broad agreement on objectives, much can often be done by a change in emphasis to help to bridge the gap between the theory and practice of legal education which most of the presenters before have uh, already mentioned in this speech that is legal education in a theoretical way and a practical way should be considered when it comes to the challenges. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, um, you just mentioned in your uh, written submission the future of legal education is a type of polyjural curriculum. Can you sort of expand on that for me please? Page kind of reservation. Yes, I am to address the audience. 
let me add one question. You know, page 12 of your uh, written submission, there is a mention about manpower planning in the field of law. Would you elaborate as to what is it that you have in mind? Uh, can we think of how many lawyers do we need in 2020 and plan the end? What type of lawyers are needed so that appropriate? Is that what you have in mind? Lawyers that we see, that we foresee to 2020 or 2025, this should be people who give values to ethical, who give ethical values uh, to more than what they uh, achieve in as monetary. And uh, a manpower approach to law will also point out the need for uh, diversified programs of training to supplement the basic degree program. That's why I think it's a new point that. Uh, each country we need to make an assessment of the law educated people that a country we could need in the next five years or so. And what type of? Are they litigators that you need or corporate lawyers or government lawyers or any other kind? And the curriculum should be adjusted to the training of such number of lawyers is what is uh, what I gather from your presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Whatever the nature of his practice is expected to be skilled in the use of language. He is a world merchant who, de who deals with nothing more tangible than the papers which has, been, uh, which has become the repository of his ideas. Respected uh, dignitaries on the chair and my dear friends, uh, I will talk on the topic of legal education in uh, SAR countries and the opportunities and their challenges. Uh, due to uh, time constraint, I will talk upon, uh, upon um, the legal education system of some countries in general and the challenges that they face. Um, in 2004, in the 18th SARC summit, uh, there has been uh, discussions of legal education uh, which has taken place. Um, they have contemplated upon the impact of British rule uh, in the legal system of SARC in, in South Asian countries and legal education as an instrument for social development in South Asia. Apart from that, uh, South Asian University, which, uh, came into, uh, which, came, uh, which came into force in the year 2010, also deals with law as a discipline. And one of the uh, uh, courses that uh, South, South Asian University provides to its students is comparative constitutional law of all South Asian countries and other countries. Um, uh, a rich selection of elective courses uh, in South Asian uh, universities allows insight into the main problems of constitutionalization, federalism, governance, human rights and uh, minority protection. Um, the, one of the uh, major changes uh, is that the, the shift in the curriculum uh, towards issues uh, concerning the development and strengthening of good governance governance practices in a globalized world reflects uh, uh, their academic uh, their, their academic communities uh, uh, communities commitment towards the internationalization of legal education system uh, when when we uh, when it comes to challenges that the south asian uh, that the south asian uh, countries face is that uh, the in legal institutions, uh, in the present scenario, the legal institutions uh, have been modeled, are modeled after those in foreign countries. So they do suffer from the congenital defect of being a product of foreign thinking. Um, and one more aspect, if we take into consideration uh, the fact that globalization, that right now we legal education stands in the era of globalization. Uh, as is interstate commerce uh, and thus cross jurisdictional, jurisdictional practices have increased, so did the need for lawyers to be aware of uh, more than just one jurisdiction. Instead of uh, viewing these countries as passwords of jurisdictions, what the lawyers need is uh, to be aware of every single jurisdiction, uh, um, often simultaneously. And if we compare uh, the legal education system in SARC and uh, in Commonwealth countries, we can take into account that 
the common uh, the Commonwealth Legal Education Association is producing a number of model curricula for Commonwealth countries such as human rights and trans transnational crimes curricula. The Commonwealth Legal Education Association has in recent years been encouraging Commonwealth countries, uh, Commonwealth countries law schools to include clinical legal teaching techniques in their educational programs. Almost 13 years since the inception of the SAR, SAR countries have seen very little development when it comes to legal education. That is, we do not have, uh, yes, I do agree to the fact that there is a South Asian university in which law is just one among uh, many other disciplines, but we do not give importance to law as such. So what we need right now is um, to bring about a difference uh, in which law is given importance uh, not just as uh, a supplementary discipline, but as something which is very important and which is very pertinent, which helps in the future uh, of the integration and development of the SAR countries. And one final uh, and another challenge that uh, the uh, that the legal education in SAR countries faces is that there are criticism that lawyers and profession a profession of law lacks something. The ethical that they do not have the ethical values. Uh, if we look at the profession of law from the perspective of a layman, they 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 hardly see lawyer as someone who uh, withholds uh, who who is a pillar of justice who supports uh, the one who needs justice. But instead, but instead they look at us as uh, someone who need to lie to in order to uh, content our facts. That someone who do not respect our opposite counsel's contentions or their issues and someone who just uh, who just uh, makes our own priorities who just keeps our own priorities in the top level and what needs to be done is that ethical values and humanitarian values needs to be a part of education uh, needs to be a part of legal education um, in SAR countries I would like to conclude by drawing your all attention, uh, drawing your all's attention to an instance uh, which, pardon me, does not cover uh, law as such, but something outside of it. Uh, until 1960s, phosphorus was. If I can take a minute to continue. Uh, until 1960s, uh, phosphorus was a mediocre athlete who went on to be the world champion in, in the sport of pole vault. Until then. The athletes used to uh, jump face down over the bar. So what Fosbury did is that he flopped instead of just jumping uh, face down over the bar. That is, he was jumping face up. So he considerably set the bar of the height much higher. So what we need right now is uh, is an idea that that encompasses something which is outside the box. I'm not talking uh, about the complete dismantling of the present legal uh, legal uh, system, legal education system, but something which polishes what we do, ha what we have presently, and to borrow what uh, other legal, uh, other regional uh, associations uh, have been uh, doing so, uh, have been uh, successfully doing. Question. We need to have pedagogical creativity. Um, can you sort of elaborate on that? What kind of creativity are you thinking about? What kind of pedagogical uh, creativity do you think Ma'am, uh, in the present scenario, if we look at how uh, law is being taught to the students, they are rather uh, very mechanical and technical, and they seldom cover uh, like psychological aspects or the ethical values or the humanitarian values that uh, a lawyer is supposed to have, uh, right? As of now, the teachers, the, the teachers have to come up with something that is out that that is outside of the box and that can uh, give students what they need instead of just bringing out lawyers that just knows a bunch of uh, a bunch of laws in the, a bunch of laws and someone who can uh, someone who is supposed to be a pillar of justice and not just
uh, we will do our best. We will make the win whether they are right or not. Good afternoon to the members of the jury and the respected dignitaries and the friends gathered here. Today I will be talking on the topic that is improving legal education through skills development initiative, opportunities and challenges for Bangladesh. Over the next five, uh, five minutes, I will be dealing with the issues. Firstly, the relevance of skills development and its necessary for legal education. Secondly, the purposes of legal education in Bangladesh and some gaps in fulfilling the skills development program in the law curriculum. And thirdly, I will be talking about the opportunities to introduce skills development initiative in law schools. And fourthly, I will be talking also the current challenges for the law school to implement this initiative. And lastly, I will be dealing with the, some best practices from regional and global, global instances to improve our legal education in Bangladesh. I would like to draw your kind attention to 2006 report done by Law Commission of Bangladesh. In that report, it was highlighted that law schools in Bangladesh are failing to integrate the practice of law for the law students. The report specifically emphasizes that the law schools should introduce some skills development programs for the law students so that they can work in the practice of law. And also, I would like to say that my paper is based on a small survey. I have conducted a survey amongst around 32 law students from 8 law schools of Bangladesh. And based on my findings, I will be highlighting that what are the poor conditions of legal, legal education in Bangladesh. And also it is to clarify that, that my paper is not suggesting that only practical aspect of law should be taken into consideration. Rather, I am suggesting that a practical approach can be taken only upon a strong theoretical base of law by the law schools. Now the question comes, what is the relevance and necessity of legal uh, skills development initiative for the law education? Uh, I would like to say that skills, innovation and knowledge, these are three factors for national development for any country. And whenever the law students are uh, getting the skills with the law schools, they will be contributing for the national development. And that's why skills development programs are relevant for the legal education. And there was a report by the American Bar Association titled Legal Education and Professional Development. And in that report, it was also observed that it is not only the responsibility of law schools, but also the Bar Council or Bar Association who should come forward and take the responsibility of uh, developing a skills development initiative in the law schools. Now, talking about the purposes of legal education in Bangladesh, I would like to say that there was a policy in 2010 that is national education policy. But in that policy, nobody will find that the government has emphasized on the skills development initiative. Rather, the policy was focusing on the theoretical knowledge of law. So this is a gap in our policy level implementation. And also in our law schools in Bangladesh, there is no concrete objectives on the part of law schools. Therefore, often we see that there are diversities between the public and private law schools and also in their curriculum and teaching methods. Say so for example, if I draw your kind attention to my written submission page number 30 regarding conventional teaching method, when I was conducting the survey, I raised a question to my respondents that what is the teaching method in your law schools? In my survey, it was revealed that 71% respondents say the teaching method is lecture based, while interactive discussion was uh, less than 10%, that is 7%, and case study based class system was less than 5%, that was 3%. And if I also draw your uh, kind attention to the traditional course curriculum, you will see that, say for example, in Dhaka University Law School, there is a course called Public Demand Recovery Law. But there is also a separate course that is uh, law, law of Civil Procedure. But while these two courses are identical in many ways, so there is no, to my understanding, there is no uh, benefit of separating two subjects, whether the law schools can introduce new subjects like 
law for nanotechnology, law for genocide, uh, law for international criminal court, and so many things. Even there is a clear absence of multidisciplinary learning approach in our law schools. Even in Bangladesh law school, there is no such formal law review edited and managed by the law students. Only uh, recent times, there was initiated by Dhaka University, some students of Dhaka University Law School that was Dhaka Law Review, though it was only limited to one life sphere. And regarding clinical legal education, there is no such formal legal education in our law, uh, law schools of Bangladesh. Uh, recently, in two law schools, that is TW University Law School and Russia University Law School, they conduct clinical legal, legal education in collaboration with Bangladesh Legal Aid and Services Trust. Now, coming to the question of taking best practices of regional and global experiences, I would like to draw your attention that in Sri Lanka, there is a Council for Legal Education, which was established by the uh, Act, which uh, name is Council of Legal Education Ordinance 19,000. According to this ordinance, the Council works in Sri Lanka to improve and reform the legal education. Also in Bangladesh, there is an institution that is called Bar Council. But can I have a one minute? Thank you. But the Bar Council is not effective to improve its legal education, though it is uh, mandated by its law to improve and reform legal education. So we can also think of uh, revisiting the institutional capacity of Bar Council. And just to conclude uh, my submission, I would like to say that third cooperation is now necessary, but we also think of taking global practices. Since legal education has its unique characteristics in all the seven and eight countries of SART, so we should also go beyond and think beyond SART and to take the best practices for the uh, professional skills development of law students. That's all from my part. Thank you. Uh, last point of uh, you, that is, you said that it is necessary to have a cooperation between and among the South countries. So I would just like to know, is it possible to pursue the best practices of the South countries to overrule the misnomers, the social misnomers and cultural hegemony? Again, I quote this terms. Social misnomer and cultural hegemony. Like the Daniel Logan versus Union of India, that case played a very well role in Bangladesh because later on in 2011, we adopted best practices in favor of the women. Even we do not have any act, we do not have any policy due to social misnoma and cultural hegemony. So, is it possible to pursue a regional cooperation through? Again and again, referencing those best practices. That's all. Well, uh, thank you for your question. Like, uh, I'm suggesting to take best practices. Now, the question is why? Since there are diversities in all the legal systems of all the third countries, we should obviously need to have a comparative discussion and comparative collaboration. And the best resource we can take, this is the third forum. That's why I'm suggesting that to take the best practices of third countries to improve our legal system, but not to sacrifice our legal education and our legal system. So keeping in mind the diversity is what we have, the sui generis characteristics of our legal system and legal education, we need to go for the best practices that has been exercised over the years by the other third countries. 